Hello, great you can join me for another E3D lesson. I am Tiam Singh. In this lesson, I will be sharing with you what is a command file. And I will use the command file in the user interface to create feature to identify P points of the element. Sometimes I want to see where is the P point. The facilities in the view shows all the P points, but sometimes I just like to see the specific element and not all the element in my view. I'm ready. Are you? Let's start. We will create the command file to attach to our UI. Let me go through how I form this file. The command file has an extension of PML CMD. I've prepared a file with the various sections. The first section, keyword setup command, is to create the command. The command is like a form, a global variable. This ends with the exit keyword. Within the setup section, we can create member for the command if we want to. These members can be used to store information like the last element, access, etc. I create a member to store the number that is pick. Next, let me go to the constructor section. The constructor must have the same name as the command. In this case, I call my constructor YTPP. There are a few values that we need to set for the command. First is the key. The key is the name that is shown in the user interface customization. It has to be unique. The key is a string variable. Next, we need to define an execution method. This is the execute variable. And for this case, I want to call my method execute. Now that the variables are defined, we can write macros on what the execute method does. To start, we need to know which P point did the user choose. To get the P point, I need to add 1 to the value chosen as the UI's selected value starts from 0 and not 1. And we store this into our member of the command. I want to use this number in command that I'm forming with strings. Hence, I do a conversion of this real value to string. If you look at the methods that the real number has, then you know that string is a method to convert it into a string. Next, I'm going to form the command that I like to execute. It is just to show the pin at the P point selected. The command is just pin1 at P1. Next, I just execute the command by evaluating the string. When executing this command, if the current element is not an element with the P point, this command will throw an error. Hence, I will put an error handler here. If there's no error, it will execute the else handle none portion. And basically, this means that the pin will be shown, but it cannot be seen clearly, hence I will make the item translucent. I will need to turn off the auto color mode as it will interfere with my settings for the item. And I will 
remove the item from the view and add it with a different color and translucency. Translucency is determined by percentages, which is 60% for this case. Now we can end the error handling and our command is ready to go. I have saved the command file in location within the PML loop. To use the command file, I need to do a PML rehash as I have already in E3D. To use a command, I need to load the command just like I would need to load a form. To see that the command is properly loaded, I can use Q variable to check whether the commands have been loaded properly. Next, I will use the register method to register my command to be used in the UI. With the command register, we are ready to actually add this command to our user interface. To start the customization, I select the active customization file. There is one for user by default. I've created a tab called TDS test. And I also have created an existing combo box which I will modify to use for the function. Instead of steer, I modified the caption to P points. Next, I'll go into the collection to add the values of the P point, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. You can see that the selectors starts from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have to add 1 to what is being selected. Next, we have to add the command, assign the command to this combo box. And you can see our show points, the key that we use is now in the commands that we can select. Let's select apply and we should be able to use our new command in the user interface. Now we have the ability to display any of the P points of the primitive that we have selected. For those familiar with PML, you might want to stop here. The next portion is to create a new function to reset the view. What I want to do is to add an option at the end that is used to reset the view. So I use the an if statement to check for this. If the user has chosen the reset view, then what he needs to do is to switch off all the pins and also restore the color back for the primitives that we have selected.
if the user has selected from 1 to 6, we need to execute our previous code. With that done, let's modify the user interface and add the additional option. Let's apply and check our new function. We hope you like this little lesson to teach you how to do UI customization and PML command. See you next time. Bye.